Hey guys, it's Charlene. Today I'm going to show you how to make incredibly realistic looking water on your cards. So let's dive right in. I'm creating today's card using some of the new products from Altenew from the July release. They sent me these and I thought they would be perfect for showing you how to create this faux water technique. So I've die cut all of the pieces out of white cardstock. I didn't use any kind of fancy cardstock. And then all I'm doing here is coming in with some water-based dye ink. I'm using Distress Ink. This is tumbled glass, so it's a nice light blue. And I'm just making sure to get the entire pond covered with that light blue. Now I'm coming in with some prize ribbon and I'm just dabbing it here and there. It doesn't need to cover the entire image. In fact, this works better if you just put the darker color in a few spots on your die cut. Now I've come in with my distress sprayer and I'm just making sure to get the piece good and wet. I'm just going to spritz and spritz and spritz. I think I sprayed the piece about six or seven times and then I just let it completely air dry. I used paper pouncers to color everything in this video, but you absolutely could use blending brushes and just pounce the brush onto your paper. Once my piece was all dry, I used my reinker and I put a little bit of embossing ink out on my glass mat and I'm using my paper pouncer to apply it to the entire die cut. You also could do this with the ink pad by tamping the ink pad on the top of your die cut. I'm going to apply clear embossing powder to the entire die cut, so it's really important to make sure that I get the die cut completely covered in that sticky embossing ink. Now what this is going to accomplish is it's going to give you that shiny, kind of beautiful surface that you would see on water, and it's also going to bring those dye inks and all of those beautiful water droplet formations that we created with the sprayer, it's going to bring those to life. So here I'm coming in with my heat gun. I'm melting all of that embossing powder goodness. And you can see already that it's just bringing out all of the beauty of those dye inks. Now I am actually going to do this a second time. You don't have to, but if you really want that clear embossing powder to have a slick all over shine, it's a good idea to repeat the process all over again. So off camera, I used my embossing ink again, covered the whole piece, and now I'm coming in with the embossing powder and getting a nice good second coating so that I can go back in again with my heat gun and melt it all down. So now that this is finished being melted, you can really see how it brings out all of those beautiful colors and you get that nice shiny surface. It looks so pretty and so realistic. I love it. Now I'm using the same technique minus the embossing powder on all of the other die cuts for my card. I'm going to color all of the flowers in purples, pinks, and blues, and they're going to be double layered. So they're the same die cut, but I'm going to layer them twice, slightly offset in order to create a full flower. So I did one flower in wilted violet, one flower in dusty concord, and then for the pinks, I'm doing one flower in saltwater taffy and one flower in worn lipstick. And then I'm going to be doing my blue flowers in Mermaid Lagoon. I'll use the two blue flowers independently, so I'm not going to layer those two up. Now the flower centers will depend on which flower they belong to. So my two purple flowers are going to have kind of a spiky purple center, which I'll show you here in just a moment that I'm going to make with milled lavender and then they will have a large center piece, which is the rusty hinge here. Whereas the blue flowers and the pink flowers are gonna have a yellow center, which is scattered straw, and then they will have the smaller brown centers that's in the rusty hinge. For my greenery, I wasn't sure how many I was gonna use. I ended up using two of each of these, but I had cut out three and I'm coloring those in Lucky Clover and in Evergreen Bow. So I get a little bit of variety of green on the front of my card. 
Now you'll notice I'm using distress inks for everything, but you absolutely could use distress oxides for this as well, because both of those inks have this awesome water reactive property that causes wicking. So you can see I did the same thing with all of the tiny die cuts that I did with the large pond piece, where I came in and I just spritzed everything really well. Once it was all dry, I could come in and layer everything up and you're gonna see here, now I've got two purple flowers, two pink flowers and two blue flowers and they look so cool with this water technique. For my next piece, I'm gonna be using the wooden rowboat die set and this is such a cool looking boat, you guys. At the way this layers up, Looking at the pieces, you would never think this would make that awesome rowboat, but it totally does. So I started out with the first piece with Distress Oxide Lost Shadow, and then for the second piece, I used some Hickory Smoke. Now I'm coming in here with Walnut Stain, and these are all oxides. I'm not gonna be spritzing the boat at all. I'm gonna leave the boat so that it's the solid color of the oxide, and when you have that in contrast with the beautiful water technique that's on all the other die cuts, it looks really nice. So after Walnut Stain, I came in with some old paper, and now lastly, I have some frayed burlap that I'm using on those tiny little pieces. Now you'll see this boat come together. I think this is such a cool die set. Now I'm doing it on this kind of fun, whimsical card. It's a little bit more feminine, but you absolutely could use this die for like a fishing scene. I could totally see that and I think it would look awesome. So I put the first piece down there. Now you can see that's where that lost shadow was. And now I'm putting the rim of the boat now I'm putting in the pieces. These are ultimately going to be kind of the underside of the seats in the rowboat. And when you layer this up, you're kind of like, wait a second, there's no way this is gonna come together like it's supposed to in the picture, but it absolutely does. How this die set has been designed, you can see there, I'm putting the seats down now. When you layer everything up, it just creates this cool 3D dimensional look. And now I'm putting the little edge of the wooden seat pieces on there. And I'm using my jewel picker here. I like to use my jewel picker a lot when I'm working with tiny die cuts that I'm gluing down. And you saw that I did that earlier with the flower pieces. It just makes the process a lot easier because then your fingers aren't getting in the way. You're not getting glue all over your fingers and all over your finished piece. So there's the rowboat, so cool. Now I'm gonna come in here with the Boat Adventures Sentiment Stamps and Dies. I'm not using the dies on this card, but I always like to have the coordinating dies on hand. I'm actually going to heat emboss my sentiment directly to my card front. So I went ahead and put down some anti-static powder tool, and now I'm coming in with some embossing ink. I'm just making sure that I have some really good coverage here with my embossing ink. When you're trying to heat emboss large sentiments like this, you really want to make sure that your embossing ink pad is nice and juicy, so you should re-ink it before you even attempt it because you're trying to get a lot of embossing powder down onto your card and stuck there. So once I had a nice stamping on there, I came in with my black embossing powder. I'm using Wow Embossing Powder, which I love their black embossing powder. And I'm gonna go ahead and melt the whole thing onto my card base. Now this may result in your card base warping just a little bit. If that bothers you, just stick it in a book for a couple hours and it will definitely flatten out. You also could run it through your die cut machine. If you're gonna do that though, I recommend putting a piece of copy paper down on top of it before you put your top plate on there because you don't wanna get a bunch of dings and nicks in your melted embossing powder on your sentiment. It'll be pretty noticeable when you turn it in the light. So now that everything is ready, we can go ahead and put the card together. I went ahead and glued the little rim around the lake and then I'm gonna glue this directly on my card. 
Now, you'll notice that this fits perfectly with the sentiment, and that's because off camera, I went ahead and put that piece on my card when I was figuring out where to stamp the sentiment. So that's something you can absolutely do to make sure you have room in order to put everything where you want it. So I've glued down my cute little wooden rowboat and then on a few of the flowers, I'm gonna glue them directly to the card front and a few of them I'm going to pop up with double-sided foam squares just to create a little bit of dimension on the card, not too much. These are the thin foam squares and I really, really like them. I use them a lot, especially over the last like three or four months. They're kind of my go-to thing that I've been grabbing. And I also have been using a lot of the Altenew foam tape just because I like the thickness. I really enjoy having dimension on my cards, but I also like to be able to mail them easily. And I find that the thinner foam tape and thin foam squares really give me that dimension I'm looking for. So in some of the greenery, I'm going to add a foam square, but I'm also gonna add glue. So that way, kind of parts of the greenery are popped up and parts of the greenery are glued directly to the card front. That's also gonna give you that interesting look of dimension, but not everything's gonna be popped up. Keep in mind, if you need to, you can always trim down your greenery in order to get it where you want it. So on some of these pieces of greenery, I trimmed off the stems in order to get them to fit where I wanted them to tuck in around on my card. So lastly, I'm coming in here with a couple of baubles. These are from Trinity Stamps. They're the bubble blowout embellishments. I use these a lot and I use the small ones quite a bit. In fact, I have used them so much that I'm out of the small ones. I wish they would come out in just a box with the small ones. But once I have those on my card, that's gonna finish everything up. I really love how this card turned out. I think it's so pretty, fun, and whimsical. Now I just have to decide who to send it to. All right, guys, I hope you picked up some tips and tricks today. Please be sure to like and subscribe as well as hit that notification bell so that I can continue bringing you more crafty content in the future. Until next time, happy crafting.